All right, now let's talk about layers. You definitely know my enthusiasm for layers, so I'm glad I get to finally share it with you. <laughs> um, okay, so let's look over here on our right-hand side. We have our layers window, and it does all kinds of crazy stuff, uh, but let's just cover the basics for now. We'll dive into more detail later. Okay, so creating a new layer, everything we need to know is kind of down here at the very bottom. So our new layer button is down here next to the trash can. So in order to create a new layer, we'll just click that and we have our new layer here. It just defaults to a title of layer one. So I'm gonna put a simple shape in this layer and I'm gonna make a perfect square. And now to make a perfect square, I need to have this rectangle tool selected over here. And then in order to make a perfect square or perfect circle, if we have the ellipse tool selected, we would hold down shift while we click and drag and that makes a perfect square. It's beautiful. Okay, so here's my perfect square. I let go and now we have our properties window, which I don't like. Uh, it's pretty simple. It lets us change the height and width of our square right here. Um, so I could do 100 by 100 and change the size of my square if I wanted to. I could change the color here. Um, I just don't like the properties window because it's always popping up and getting in my way. Um, but you'll find that it does a lot of interesting things. So here we have my square in my new layer and this is called rectangle one now because I have a rectangle in it. If I wanted to, I could double click on rectangle one and rename it to purple square. Okay, so I've renamed it to purple square and now I still have Kevin and Yoko in this layer underneath. And I clicked on the eyeball here. Uh, clicking on the eyeball hides and shows my layer, which is pretty neat and it comes in handy quite often. So um, Kevin and Yoko has been hidden. I, it's not visible right now because the eyeball is not selected. So I'm gonna click there to show Kevin and Yoko. And you can see my purple square layer is highlighted here, which means that it's the one that I'm moving around with my move tool. So if I wanted to move Kevin and Yoko, it's not, unfortunately, it's not as simple as just clicking on Kevin and Yoko. Uh, because I still have this purple square layer selected. Rather, I would have to go into layers and click on the Kevin and Yoko layer to make sure it's selected. And then with my move tool, I can move Kevin and Yoko's photo around. Um, and if I wanted to go back to the square, I would just click over on the layers window, purple square, then I can move the purple square around. You'll notice here I have this default background layer that pops up immediately that uh, is standard on all Photoshop documents. Um, it has a little lock symbol, which means if I select it and click and drag around, I can't actually move it because uh, it is locked. So I get this warning notification just saying, you know, you can't use that move tool because there's a lock on this layer. In order to remove the lock, if you ever wanted to, you just take the lock and you click and drag and then throw it away in that trash can and that removes the lock. And then this layer is now up for grabs, so I can just move it around if I want to. I don't want to do that though, I'd rather just lock it. So if I want to lock it again, when I have this layer selected, I can go up here and just click on this lock. There, and now it's locked. Um, so we have our locked layer, and um, we have Kevin and Yoka's layer, and then we have our purple square. Okay, so if you need to copy a layer, for instance, say we wanted um, two purple squares, uh, there are two things we can do. We can either uh, grab our purple square layer here, drag it down, and drop it in the new layer button area, which creates a copy. So now we have two purple squares. So if I select this purple square copy and move it over, you'll notice we have two of them. Um, or I could delete this copy and I can do it a different way. Um, so if I have the purple square layer selected, I could take um, my option tool or option button, excuse me, and hold it down and then click and drag this purple square and it's bringing over a new one. And again, purple square copy. So there are two ways you can do it. It's really up to you which one you prefer. Um, I do it pretty much usually the uh, latter of the two methods. Um, but again, everything's all personal opinion in Photoshop. And you'll notice sometimes that I will be definitely doing things that you might find a shortcut for or a different way to do it. And that's absolutely fine. Everybody uses Photoshop differently. And uh, there are so many ways to accomplish everything you wanna do. Okay, so now let's talk a little bit about forming groups and putting things into groups and folders. So they're technically called groups in Photoshop, um, but if you look down here, uh, third from the right, we have our group button, which is just like creating a new folder or creating a new group is what it's called. So if I click that, I have this little folder icon here where it says group one. If I name this, I could just name this um, folder exclamation mark, why not? It's exciting. Okay, so now I can drag things and drop them into the folder 
and now they're grouped. So if I have a lot of things that are associated with one another, I could put them in a folder together. It just keeps our layers a little bit more organized. So if I click this arrow here, it minimizes that and kind of tucks all them in inside of the folder. And then again, you can rearrange things in whatever order you'd like if we had a bunch of folders or a ton of layers. So if I expand them and then minimize them, you can see what happens there. If I put things in a folder and I want to click this eyeball, I can hide that folder so we can't see it. I could also show the folder, lock the folder, unlock the folder, do all kinds of stuff here. And it's quite nice. Um, one last thing I want to tell you is changing the color of the layers. If you are a color coding kind of person, you like to keep things nice and organized, which I definitely do, especially when you have a lot of things. Say um, all purple squares throughout my design, I want to make sure that I can see them. So I'm going to right click by either holding down control and clicking on the eyeball or just right clicking the old fashioned way with my mouse and I can see these color options here. I'm going to select purple because it is the closest color to this purple square that I wanted to mark. Um, and you can see here that it just gives it a little color and this is completely optional. You know, this is just a little tip that I have to recommend uh, to keep things clean and decluttered. Um, but you can see here that we now know how to colorize. We now know how to uh, lock layers. I can throw away a layer by clicking it, dragging it to this trash can, letting go. I'll just delete this one too, and then delete this folder. And we also just know how to create new layers, copy layers, put layers into groups and folders, and remove locks and apply locks. So that's all there is to know for beginner's layer information. We'll dive deeper into some of these things later.